Merry Christmas. Yes, it is still Christmas. We're still in that Christmas season. Now, this is the last Sunday of the Christmas season. And we have a guest speaker today. In fact, the rest of this worship service is being conducted by different leaders around the conference, Tennessee Conference of the United Methodist Church. And we get to hear our bishop preach. Enjoy. Grace and peace to you from God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Rob Martin, and I serve as the assistant to Bishop McAlilly here in the Nashville Episcopal area. And I welcome you to this time of worship this Sunday after Christmas. It is my prayer that as we share in this time together that you will experience the warmth, the light, and the love of God, the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ. As we gather, hear these words. Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said Light. Peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said Peace. Love looked down and saw hatred. I will go there, said Love. And so he, the Lord of Light, the Prince of Peace, the King of Love, came and dwelt among us. O oh, come, O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ, Christ the Lord. Amen. I'd invite us all now to join in a time of silence where you can open up your heart and let God hear the aches and the cries of your heart, or maybe for some of you, a song of praise. But I invite you now into a time of silence, and then I will continue to lead us in prayer. Would you bow your heads with me now? Almighty God, you who have made us and carried us through times this year we could not imagine that we have faced, we give to you now all of the unspoken cries of our heart that you have heard, the groaning of our soul, and for some of us, shouts of deep praise for how you have been with us this season. 
We trust you, God, with all that we are, and we ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to individually shape us and also the congregations in which we are members so that we might truly be obedient to you and to love you with every fiber of our being. We ache, Almighty God, as we face the new year to be more like Christ and to do, Lord, that you all that you have called us to be. And so it is in the power, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that we offer and say now together as a whole our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 18. Now hear the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were not who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From the fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the children of God. And all of us say, thanks be to God.
Will you pray with me and for me now? O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter in every storm of life and our eternal home. We gather and worship this day on this, the first Sunday after Christmas, celebrating the gift of Christ come into the world. We pray, O oh God, that we might come and adore him, that we might come and worship him, and that we might come in this year to follow new creatures in Christ, following Jesus into the world. And now, Lord, may those who have gathered here in person and on the screen hear you and not me, see you and not me. And when we rise from this service, may we be so very careful to give you the praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, it's been a long time since there were little ones at our home on Christmas morning. A long time since we got up before daylight to see what gifts had been left under the Christmas tree. I miss those days. I miss the anticipation leading up to Christmas morning. This year, I miss the festivities around Advent and Christmas that we always have enjoyed in our congregations. I miss the wonder of Christmas Eve, candlelights and carols and communion. I even miss the exhaustion of a Christmas Eve. Our family tradition on Christmas morning was that before we could go in and see what wonders Christmas had brought, the lights on the tree had to be on, the Christmas carols had to be playing, everyone had to be together, and everything had to be just right. Lynn and I learned after the kids were grown that they'd been up long before the lights on the tree came on to check out what surprises Santa had left under the tree. Well, Christmas has come and gone. And presents have been unwrapped. The joy has been full. I have to tell you, I've thought a lot about Christmases past this year. The churches that I've served, the different customs each church enjoyed, the joy I experienced as a pastor serving Holy Communion on Christmas Eve and then taking the light from the altar and then going pew by pew until the entire sanctuary was filled with light singing Silent Night, Holy Night. I've been thinking much about Christmas this year. How fortunate we are that the creative ones across the years have given us such powerful music. Indeed, what is Christmas if not for the music? Around the house this week, we've been listening to Christmas carols. And always, my favorite, O Come All Ye Faithful. You know, I heard something in that hymn this year that I'd not particularly paid attention to previously. You know the verse, true God of true God, light from light eternal, son of the Father begotten, not created. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. In John's gospel, you don't get the manger. You don't get the angels. You don't get the magi, no. What John gives you is this strange beginning that is way more lofty, more aspirational. In the first 18 verses of chapter 1, you get this glorious, joyful, abounding language and yet in this these words you have this amazing explicit theological vision of who Jesus is and where he came from right off the bat it's there maybe after you hear the reading you're scratching your head wishing for something a little more down to earth like a manger and animals and barnyards and a cradle don't read John's gospel if you want to keep it simple. No, John dives in the deep end of the pool right at the beginning. I have to tell you, I love reading this text. I love the disturbing and often incomprehensible language that John employs. I love this text because it is precisely in the theological density of Christmas that we receive the good news. You can find it in other hymns as well. I think of things, uh, hymns like uh, the second verse of O Come All Ye Faithful, True God of True God, Light from Light Eternal, Son of the Father, Begotten, Not Created. O Come, O Come, Let Us Adore Him. O Come, Let Us Adore Him. O Come, Let Us Adore Him. Christ the Lord. 
these densely packed, mostly fourth century words come still mysteriously to bring us to the nexus of our theological heritage about who Jesus is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. You hear the illusion here, the reference, the foretelling of the Holy Trinity. What's John saying? Well, the hymn tri writer tries to answer who is it that is at the center of this Christmas story. The answer is, it is Jesus Christ, the Lord it is God who is at the center of the story, but not simply God as such, but God from God, God's life boiling over from eternity into time. God's life communicating itself so completely that makes, it makes human life unrecognizably different. The early Christian writers were deeply preoccupied with a search for images that would allow you to say that the life of God truly and fully flows out of eternity into the world of Jesus of Nazareth and yet would leave God undiminished. Interestingly, both John 1 and O come all ye faithful reach for this image of light. What has come into, him, into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. But not just any light, light from light. I think one of the reasons Christmas Eve is so powerful for us is that in the lighting of a candle, one from another, you don't have any less of the first flame than you have at the last flame. And all of those flames burn brightly and hot as the first. Jesus is that light, the light of the world, God from God, light from light. <clears throat> it is action, it is energy. It is fire from fire. Maybe that's why the Holy Spirit's image, the image of the Holy Spirit often is that of fire. The source God gives all God is and has into the heart of this life, this Son. And the Son truly shares in this life, this divine light of God's nature with no qualifications, no lessening. And I love this verse, verse 5. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. I remember when our son Chris was about two years old, he came bounding into our bedroom early one morning after the sun had come up and said, it's not dark anymore. The message, that's the message of the gospel of John and how desperately we need that message this year. My goodness, we've had enough darkness to last a lifetime this year in our world, in our country, across our state, in our congregations. Too many people have died alone, distanced from loved ones. Too many services of death of resurrection at a, a graveside rather than a sanctuary without friends around us to comfort and love us. Many of us have had to walk this year into the darkness of pain and suffering and loss. Some of us, more than others, are more acquainted with darkness than we want to admit. Some of you know I lost my mother on March 13 this year, just as things were shutting down at the beginning of this pandemic. We had a simple service at First United Methodist Church, Tupelo, Mississippi, with family only. There was no visitation, no friends surrounding us with love and support, just our small family, my brother, my sister, our children, and our grandchildren. We thought naively that we would be able, maybe the Monday after Easter, to gather in the sanctuary and invite our friends and extended family to celebrate her life. Well, that was a pipe dream. And here we are, still in some places, having virtual worship. Well, the comforting thing about this journey this year is that we know we're not alone in our grief. Many among us have walked this lonesome road. But may I simply be honest with you today? A little bit of darkness goes a very long way. Now, here's the thing. When, when we're honest, we acknowledge that darkness is more than that pitch black, can't see the end of your nose kind of darkness. It's more than that. It's psychological. It's emotional. Sometimes it's relational. And more often than not, it is also spiritual darkness. And when I say darkness, what comes to mind? What comes to your mind? Here's what comes to my mind. Night 
evil, doubt, depression, loss, fear, death. Well, you get the picture. I don't know about you, but personally, I will walk, walk a long, long way to avoid the darkness. <clears throat> but the kind of darkness 2020 has given us cannot be avoided. It comes in on us. It is a disrupting force in our culture and in our church and our personal lives. We can't simply turn on the flashlight feature of our smartphone to dispel the darkness. We cannot. But here's what I know. Those of us who are of sufficient years are well acquainted with darkness, and some much more than others. You lose a job. Your marriage falls apart. Your child acts out. Your child acts out in some attention-getting way. You pray hard for something that does not happen. You fail. You lose someone you love, and the artificial lights of your life are extinguished. The old gospel hymn says the darkest hour is just before the dawn. Well, here's what I know. Some of us know far too well what it's like to endure the dark nights, the dark night of the soul, the dark nights beyond darkness, and the days more gray each one than what had gone before. And when we're there, we strain every fiber of our being looking toward the east for any trace of light that might be rising from the horizon. And so often it's there. And if it's there, it's a dim light. Well, here's the truth of it. Today on this first Sunday after Easter, we kneel once again at the manger and bring with us not just our darkness, but the ache and pain of the world's darkness. An election that strained our democracy as well as our friendships. Racism, a conversation that many among us think we've already had enough of and others among us think we have only just begun. And yet we're mired as we are in the land of deep narcotics. We proclaim once again, we sing once again, we affirm once again what has come into being in Jesus was life and the life was the light of all people and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. I love the way one scholar translates this verse. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand the light. The darkness did not understand the light. In some corners of our world, Christians make it more difficult by their words and actions. In fact, the darkness we cause others may in fact make it more difficult for others to see and understand the light. But I will tell you what makes the Christmas story real for me. It is you. When I've had the privilege of being with you, of looking into your faces, into your eyes, I stand with speechless amazement. Every one of you and every one of you, I see the face of God. I see that it was worth everything for God believed you were worth it all to come into the world. What has come into being in Jesus was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not and does not and will not overcome it. The darkness will not overcome it. Can I say that one more time? And the darkness will not overcome it. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. May it be so in your life and in mine this first Sunday after Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year, John Wesley would strongly encourage the faithful of the community known as Methodists to join in a covenant prayer each year as they reset and got to start anew and fresh as they rededicated themselves to God. And it's called the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. It's from the United Methodist Hymnal, and I'm going to 
I ask that you join with me in this prayer today. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Write me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and thy disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant, the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. He came singing love. He lived singing love. He died singing love. He rose in silence. And this Christmas season, if the song is to continue, we must do the singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.